How did you pitch the company that helped you finance All Roads to Perla? I met uh, Red Sanders of Red Entertainment Red uh, Productions um, through uh, composer, our composer named Curtis Heath, who did a lot of my um, uh, short films. And they were in Fort, Fort Worth, and I was scouting in, down there. And he was like, hey, have you talked to Red Entertainment? I was like, no, I haven't. And then um, uh, they have offices in Santa Monica. I was in L.A. at the time and s sent over an email and said, hey, we have a mutual friend, Curtis. But, um, I'm, I've got this script that I'm you know, going to be doing. And um, they, they read it, loved it. We had a meeting. And I love people from Texas. And they, they were like s sweethearts. And they were just great. And Derek and Red are just fantastic folks. And then... Um, I had uh, I had my uh, mood reel, I had my lookbook, I had pretty much you know um, things this and they uh, things set up and they they liked it, and then I eventually became with, with Go Pop Films and Red Productions and we we held sort of certain um, you know uh, meetings for investors and things like that, but eventually we we cobbled up the financing through. Um, separate investors and got that all done. Um, Red and Derek were instrumental in, in lifting the project even further and getting the script to uh, Lindsey Graham who, who worked at uh, Betty May Casting and she was just finished casting like um, A Star is Born and, and Suicide Squad and things like that uh, and, and, and bigger fe features but she, she liked, really liked the script and came on board and it, that through that, through that, our project um, uh, picked up steam, you know, and we were able to. That's how we were able to get um, actors to respond uh, and things like that, and 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 um, we, that's how we got lucky in terms of nailing some of these really, you know, like Dash and Addison and Alex um, and the whole crew there. Um, so. Through with without that involvement, without Red and Derek and you know and Lindsay, uh, I would have been just shooting um, All Roads to Perla with my father <laughs> in there acting, you know. So, you know, uh, uh, somehow it just swims up. Um, and then, mind you, we also approached other tons of other production companies who who, who we wanted to partner up with it. but you know you get hey we don't get the script uh, this is it's not for us or we have a similar project or you know it's lots of things so that's why I even sit back here to today just thinking it's a miracle that it it's even out there for people to see so um, so it goes back to that question when is it good or, or crap uh, Charles Bukowski and I was like Man, after just going through this gauntlet, uh, I'll, I'll reserve, reserve my uh, opinions to myself. Do you know why some of the investors passed? Did they give you, what, when when these were people, I know you said that they had said it might be similar to something I already have or it's not for them, but when Red sent it out to the people in his network. Yeah, I, again, I, it has to do with subject matter, it has to do with connection, has to do with um, people connecting it, you know, like, or people wanting to change the story, or people want to do this, or, or does it resonate? So back to your question, go. Why do you want to write this? So you have to find people that kind of falls in that wheelhouse that believes the same way you do. Uh, our film is is about love and pain, loss, love, lust. It's 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 a dark and gritty film, and it's not not for everyone. It, it's it's um. To me, there's messages of hope, but to others, they might see an ugly side of society that um, doesn't hit, you know, especially, especially so when an investor reads it, are they going to connect, connect with this, you know? Um, so, so they either do or they don't, and you, you go into the next person who, who connects with it and, 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 and find that. Um, so if you're out there, it's just like, first, you have to champion yourself then find people that would help champion you and then and then keep going i think that's the, the steps when you're dealing with production companies investors what do they want to see first a log line synopsis of the script yeah so basically basically on um, log line 
gets everyone. If you could make a killer log line, I know it's it's hard. One, two sentences. Uh, your pitch deck, your lookbook, your mood reel. Uh, to for them to get them excited to read the script. No one wants to read anything. So, you know, um, that's the problem. There's just a lot of scripts. So how do you get um, people to read it? So you have to entice them, whether it's through that log line, through the lookbook, through the mood reel, through whoever's already attached, or an actor, or a producer. It just has, to, and that's what they call it, a package, I guess. You package things so it makes them, it makes it harder for them to say no. Um, so that's what I would do as m much as you can. Um, so start, definitely start with a lookbook. So at least it gives you an idea of, of, um, what the story is about, the mood and tone. And then, you know, you don't want to give a crime thriller to, um, family drama production company that, unless they want to branch off and do something different because they're used to doing that. So just, you know, maybe research comparable films and what production companies that, that have produced that in that particular budget level and then approach them, you know, things like that. So um, IMDB pros will be your friend and, um, and just research. Uh, and, then, and then just send out and, and hope, hope someone reads it. It took me five years, so. You know. Can you describe the All Roads to Perla lookbook? How many images were in it? How many pages? Sure. So basically it's like a PowerPoint presentation. I think mine had like 12 pages. And, you know, I'll say that I'll have a picture, the color palette, the tone, pictures from, from um, a lot of the pictures because I had photographed already because of my, my photography. So it's already a world that I've already created. Um, then I would add, you know, the log line, the tone, the theme, and then, and then that's the feel, the visuals of it, what this movie would look like. Uh, I just, and then I had a mood reel. So what that meant was I, I, I clipped together films and music and made it like a trailer of a f how I, the film would look like. It's interesting because I just looked at my mood reel that I created. I hadn't looked at it in ages. And you should see it to the trailer right now, five years apart, to see the, the difference. It's pretty fascinating. Um, and our composer, well, not the no, sound designer, is like, man, oh my god, I just saw that mood reel. That dance scene looks almost identical to the, what we shot, I didn't know what was what. You know, it's kind of fascinating. So if you could show what the what the world you're creating already without shooting it, you don't, you know, it's a quicker way than creating a short film to, to, to create that atmosphere. At least it will give you, entice you to read the script. That's all I wanted someone to do. That they knew I knew how to make visuals, I knew how to make sound. Now you, you just judge me on my um, narrative writing. Um, so that, that was my, thought process. And how long is the mood reel? It's like two minutes. Yeah, two minutes or two minutes and 30 seconds, something like that. Or a previous, they call it a previous too. Um, so I do that now. Like if they send me, like if um, like a, a manager send you scripts to read and it's something you like and you want to be up for it to direct, I'll like, oh yeah, that's a great script. That's a fantastic. I'll quickly throw up a, a mood reel and go, this is how I see the film, this is what I'll do. You know, um, the tone and mood of it. So if I'm understanding correctly, it was about three to four years of this process of you sending out the lookbook, the mood reel, the packaging for All Road Superla. How many people did you actually send it to? And what, what was their response time? How many actually read the screenplay? Um, I have an Excel spreadsheet of everyone who I would send it to. I don't remember. I don't. I I know I kept it because I, I like to keep track of it. A, a lot of people did not read or did not respond. The majority, majority of it. I was even de determined to shoot it no matter what. It was of that fateful sort of. It only took one, which was Red Productions. So maybe out of. 50 to 100 red productions 
or I'm just I'm just throwing it in there. I, I know it was pretty. Um, Red Productions came on, and even after Red came on, we went to bigger production companies to kind of um, get involved, and that was pretty much turned down turned down too. So we just did it on did our own. So that process, I couldn't even get my friends to read it. I couldn't get. I, it's that's what I'm saying. No one likes to read anything, you know. Even, even what have you? It's 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 that's why it's a, a miracle that Derek saw, was like read it and loved it. So it just took, you know, it was like, oh, what is the story, and what's that, you know? Um, so to be long winded, um, it took. We I submitted it for quite a few, and it was really just one or two that responded. And then that was it. You know, that's all it kind of took. Knowing this, knowing that it's very difficult to get anybody to read a script, is there anything you think you could do to speed up this process the next time around? Uh, I think the next time around, um, it's, it's, it's getting easier, but I think most people don't make it to the next time around. So the first time around, I don't think there is. I think it's just because we're saturated and even it's like you just it's like I, I always go back to that Denzel Washington quote you know you stick around the barbershop long enough you're going to get a haircut so no, no matter it's the third rejection the 100th or the 400th you just got to stick it out and then you're going to get f f uh, um, frustrated and you can just get tired and go I don't need to wait for anyone I don't need this production company say yes I'm going to do it and then you set a date. Uh, once I set a date, that's when I got uh, phone calls. When I said November 13th, a specific date, I'm shooting no matter what, this train is going. Then it, it started, even with actors and even with this stuff. So you have to be very specific. You can't go, I'm shooting in the fall. I'm shooting November 13th, even at 2 p.m. We're rolling, first night, you know, things like that. That helped because that made it real. You know who it was important to? Me. It made it real for me. So I was like, then whoever I said that to, I'm doing it, you know? And then, so that's why I was like, gosh, I'm either delusional or naive, or, but I think you have to. So that's, that's sort of what happened. So I, I don't know if I could do anything different. And the other part that you said most people don't, they don't get a second time to do this. Uh, I was just looking at the numbers of something. Someone, someone sent the numbers. After your first feature, it was like, you know, 17%, you know? for So that's not the majority, you know, especially when you have investors and people. So that's what I'm saying as a producer, to have a sustainable career is to make the investors money back. It's not about art. You know, as a director, you might be able to, but um, uh, that's the fear. And you look at the stats and what's happening. So you have to mitigate that risk. Um, you have to figure out ways to maneuver that. And that's that's the business side. That's that's not going. Hey, this frame looks awesome. Oh, that's a great color color makeup and this. It's how are we can do this again, and how can we deliver it. And how could we shoot it in time and how get it under budget? Um, that's just the reality of it. And, um, you know, and uh, that's the brutal part of it. Unless you shoot it with your iPhone and, you know, and, and, and which is great and have crew. But there's only a certain amount of favors you could call. You, you know, you don't want to not pay people to, to work their long, hard hours and what they do. They do, you know, it's. There's, there's only so much, you know. Um, I just feel, that's just me personally. You, have, you don't, you know, I don't want to be a production company that doesn't pay people to not do their, you know, everyone needs to be paid. So and there's, it takes a lot of people to make something and that adds up to the budget, um, so. Would you say it's easier for you to get your emails returned now that you have an excellent body of work to point to? Yeah, I think so, because you, you, you have that first, first feature um, kind of done. So now they can't say, oh, he hasn't done a first feature. But now they could say, but he hasn't done a thriller. You know, there's always something. But 
the whole game, name of the game, I think what's important is if it gives you confidence. It gave me confidence to keep going. So all these little wins. So if you get any little win, any little thing, keep it because there's just so many losses. So you could get these this confidence to keep going. Now, because of All Roads Perla Sleeping in Plastic um, script, I got ma management opportunity and there, and there, and I had three other scripts ready to rock and roll and a TV pilot. So I'm waiting on this. I wanted to make sure I'm not, when the opportunity to meet, you're you talking to people, oh, what are you doing after this? I'm not f fumbling and going, oh, I'm working on something. I was like, here, here you go. I've got tons left. Um, and I wanted it to create a situation where um, it was hard to people, harder for people to say no, you know, uh, like, I don't want to wait around because you're waiting around all, all these years. So all that anxiety made, made me write, you know, and, and do all these kind of, kinds of things. So I wanted to make sure I had things. So um, so I was able to um, get reps and then they they now help push pro the projects um, and things. And, and um, you know, thankful for that in terms of of, of, of trying to climb this hill of who what of creation you know of of um getting projects made um so i'm still learning each day this whole thing you know so which which um uh yeah it's fun